Hello, this is Isaac, and this is the final part of the Building a Registration System with React Native series. Okay, so we're going to make it quickly. I already, I'm showing you now the completed app, and I'm going to go step by step and explain what each method is doing. Since we don't have much to do anymore, it will be very fast. So I went ahead, remember uh, in the last part we stopped and we had the log out button, right? So we managed the user state, we logged them in, and we logged them out and we verify the access token. Now we want to let the user to update his account or delete it, right? So let's begin. Let's first handle the update account. How is this working? So we have the home view, right? And by the way, I added here uh, the lifecycle method, uh, a component, component will mount. I added this so we can get the token right on the spot when the View is loading, and we're gonna set it. We're gonna set this access token state right here, right? Because we're gonna need this access token once we go once we navigate the user to the update uh, view, because we're passing it as a prompt. Okay, so now let's take a look. So I added the buttons, right? Again, it's it is familiar. Nothing new, nothing different. This one is gonna uh, this this one is gonna invoke the redirect method, and it will redirect the user to the update. And this one is gonna confirm the lead. This is the delete button. We will tackle this very soon. So what do we have in the update view? Well, first we have the access token, and we're accept, we're accepting it accepting it as the, the props, right? And we can do it because of these two, right, we must add it right here. If you want to add it, it's not going to work. And I'm just going to show you what I mean. Let's delete this. Let's go to the update view. And again, you see it verified the token and it redirected me back to this home view and cannot read property access token of undefined. So we have no access to the props and the constructor. I could, however, Type it here in the return and it will work. But for some reason it's unavailable in the constructor, right? Let's take it back. It's gonna refresh, redirect and update account. Okay, so this is very similar to the registration form. It's the same uh, fields, same button, just different syntax, different uh, word, we're using update and we are prefetching the user's data so we can fill out the form to be user friendly. So let's take a look how is how how is, is this all done. So first we have the lifecycle method, right? Component will mount. And again the component will mount if you can see here uh, immediately before the initial rendering occurs. If you call set state within this method Render will see the update, updated state and will be executed only once despite the stage change. Sure, this is perfect for us. We could use a did mount, I believe, but it really doesn't matter. So let's take a look at our fetch users data. So fetch users data, we're hitting again the API. We've been through that. We did so many calls to the API, so it shouldn't, you should be perfect by now. Getting the API, getting the response, if it's success, in this case, we need to parse it because we're getting an object. Now, when I built the API, I said that on success, it will return only the name and the email of the user. We don't need the password. We don't need definitely the access token because we're getting it from the async storage. In this case, we're getting it through the props, but we don't need anything else. We only need th these two fields, right? So if I'll take a look at our console and you can see data is name, data is email, right? It's coming from this console.log. So in my database in the back end, the email column name is email and the name column name is, e is name. That's why, th that's why these are the keys. So I can set the state dynamically because I'm using here the same names, email and, and name. Now, keep in mind, I can remove this. I can remove this and it's still gonna work. Why? Because technically I'm setting the whole state. So once I set the state, that state is available to us, right? But 
because I want to make it clear, right? If we come to this app in a month, so we will know, okay, we have in the state email name and we won't go, oh, so this is creating our states. Now I get it. Okay, so some things you can avoid, but it's not necessarily a good practice, right? So sometimes just add this extra line or two of code to make things more clear, even though you might not need it. In this case, it's perfectly, it, it makes sense. So we're setting the state on success, on failure again, we're gonna redirect him, uh, in this case, to the login. Because remember, we are always verifying the access token on each request, except when the, log, when the user logs in or registering, because in that case, we don't have the access token. We hope to get it on success, but we don't have it yet. But here, we already have the data, right? We are requesting to change data, so we, we are using the access token as a key. And if we don't have that, then something is clearly wrong, and we, will, we won't figure out what happened. We're just gonna redirect the user to the login. And if it fails again, then there's probably a problem with our app, with our syntax, and we will need to solve it, probably. So we're fetching the user's data, so if we will take a look, the only thing I've changed in this uh, form is that instead of using a placeholder, I'm using the value of this that state that name because thanks to the component will mount, it's already available because we are fetching the user's data, we're setting the state very fast, and once the uh, view is rendering, then this is available already. So hence why we are seeing the name and the email already there. And on submit, right, we're gonna call the on update press method which is this one, again, another method, another fetch method. In this case, the method is patched because we are uh, editing, right? So this is the common uh, REST API convention. If I, anything else, if I'll put post, it's not gonna work because Rails won't recognize. Rails is expecting a patch and then it will send it to the update method in the user's controller, okay? So on success, we will redirect the user to the home and we will send back the response. The response is a flash message. And uh, let's take a look. Console.log. Well, no, let's, there's no reason to console.log. I'm, I'm gonna show you that in the home view itself. So this is a flash message. It's gonna say account was successfully been updated. And in the redirect, you see I'm passing it as a prompt. Flash, flash. If I'm going to the home, well, because it's a props, I don't have to actually fetch it here as a state. I can just do something like this. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make an if statement. If this dot props, because here the props are available. If this dot props dot flash, if we have that props available, then, uh, well, first we will need to define flash message. And let's make that A here, so flash message. This is gonna be equal to a text with a style. I already have the style defined. Styles.flash. And we're gonna pass this dot props dot flash. And we're gonna close the text tag and else it's gonna be equal to null. And we can simply add it right here. Flash message. Now, the reason I'm using an if statement and not just putting it here because I have a styling that makes it background to be green. And if I'll just put it, then you'll see. So in case of a flash message, you'll see the, the green background. But if I don't have any message, you'll, see, you'll still see a small background because it's still taking play, space, right? So this is the reason I'm doing this if else statement. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. So this is the flash message. So it should work. Let's test it out. Can update the account. Let's click update. And account has been updated successfully. This is not coming from the mobile app. This is coming from the back end. And if I want to do one, make a mistake, password confirmation, so uh, we're getting the proper error response. And if I want to add JJ and I want to update that, if I 
account has been updated successfully again. And if we'll take a look at the database, so you see currently it's only J. And if I refresh, it's JJ indeed. So it's working, right? So now all we have left is to uh, delete the account. So let's click on that, right? So we're getting a nice alert iOS message. Again, this is a native component, thanks to the React Native creators for using iOS components. So if I click, click, then nothing's gonna happen. But let's take a look what's gonna happen here, what's going on here. And so we have the button, delete account, and on press, it will invoke the confirm delete method. Now let's check it out. So we have the alert iOS, right? So this is the title. You've seen the title, right? Are you sure? This is the body, right? So this is the body. And in the third argument, I can pass an extra text for it that will be function as the button, right? So an array of objects. So the first object I'm passing is a text, which is cancel, as you've seen already, and nothing else, which means that the user can click cancel, but it's not gonna do anything, right? It's just gonna close the alert. But here I have delete, right? So on press, I added the on press event listener. And on this case, we will invoke the on delete method. And on the on delete method, we will hit the API again with the fetch. The method is delete. And we're simply deleting the user on the front of the database and we're gonna redirect the user back to the root. It's that simple, right? All, you see the, the pattern here, right? All these calls, delete, patch, post, it's the same syntax. You only change the URL, uh, you change the data that you're passing, the method, but you see how easy it is. And I think that this, uh, what we're doing now, it's the best practice for you because most of the mobile apps, uh, they, they, the base of every mobile app is API, right? All these calling to the API. So now you're pretty, you're supposed to be perfect with using fetch and API calls. Calls, get, post, patch. So this is good practice. So let's, uh, let's delete the user, so we need to say goodbye to Jay. It's been a privilege. Delete, and well, it looks like it worked, but let's check out. Is JJ still with us? Indeed, he is not, right? So we deleted Jay. So this sums up this short series We've been able to manage the user state, you know, log in, log out, we're storing the token, we're verifying the token, so we learned how to use the async storage. This is a global storage and it's perfect for storing as an access token. And again, access token is the good way to go, right? It's much better than sending the email and password on every request. This is a bad, bad, bad way to work and it's much less secure. And one of the big problems that people might think, okay, then uh, this account shouldn't be confidential, right? So in the worst case, someone will steal the account and delete some stuff, no problem at all. But you forget one thing, you need to be responsible to your users. And many users, they use the same password for everything, for their Gmail, for their Facebook, and for your, account, your website, maybe. And if because of your irresponsibility, they, uh, their password was stolen and because of that it caused a breach in their email account and their Facebook account and this is very bad. This is very very bad. This can cause serious consequences to some people. So avoid. Don't have that responsibility on you. Always minimize the risks. Okay, don't try to figure out what's best for your, what's best for your user in this case. In this case, just stick to the conventions, right? Stick to the conventions stick to what is working and what's and what's not avoid right avoid the bad stuff don't try to be superman that's what i'm saying so we covered everything any questions any suggestions again on the comment below and i really enjoyed doing that to be honest it was a bit difficult this is the first really series that i'm doing and i and i thought it would be much easier but apparently it's not it's not that easy but i still hope that you were able to learn something so, I guess this is goodbye, gentlemen. It's been a, pl it's been a pleasure. Have a great day.